Hello everyone and welcome to episode 15 of the PVM Hub. If you're unfamiliar with this series, these are a collection of beginner-friendly revolution guides geared towards teaching the very basics of RuneScape 3 PVM. These guides are by no means optimal, but simply a good starting off point for those just starting on their PVM journey. Today we'll be taking a big step into the deep end of PVM and looking at the Warden of Gilanor himself, Telos. Telos is one of the most difficult bosses in all of RuneScape. It's important to note that Telos works on an enraged system, meaning the higher enraged, the more damaging and punishing the mechanics. After 100% enraged, Telos will gain an extra phase. This guide, in particular, will focus on less than 100% enraged and only stand to give you a game plan and comfortability with the fight. As you learn and progress, the fight will become much more second nature and you'll be able to carry on your enrage well beyond 100%. The biggest draws at Telos are the dormant tier 92 weapons and the orb sets that activate them. These are some of the best items in the game, and if you get a full orb set you can earn around 1 billion GP on average. I should mention though that it is extremely unlikely to get unique drops below 100%, but you need to start somewhere and you should still be getting good profit from your successful kills. As always, these guides are broken up into a few different parts, those being the recommendations and requirements, setting up your revolution bar, the important facts and mechanics of the fight, and then a full fight breakdown. Starting with requirements, Telos actually has quite a few. Telos will require you to successfully solo each of the God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses, claiming their piece of the sigil as your own. That means that Telos requires you to have 80 in attack, range, mage, and prayer. If you haven't soloed all of the bosses yet, I have a guide on each of them which I will link here to help you with that first. For my recommendations, I would suggest we do this with mage. Range is equally as good, if not better, in terms of DPS, but Mage has a lot of easy stuns which will be very helpful at this boss. I suggest 90 Mage at a minimum, it can be done with less, but requires a lot more user input and raises the difficulty substantially. For defense, 81 for barricade will be helpful, especially if you're not comfortable with harder timings later on. Since 80 prayer is already required, I suggest that or higher. In an ideal case, you will have 95 as well as curses unlocked, but in my run-throughs, I will be doing it with the basic prayer book and augury. For summoning, I think a war turtle at a minimum would be the required for learning. So 67 is bare bones, and if you can get up to a yak, that would be way better at 96. In terms of herb lore, I have to recommend 92 at a minimum for overloads. They are such a strong potion and really make the fight that much more hands-off. If you can't get up to 92 for any reason, buy a grand magic potion off the grand exchange, and that may work for you. For gear and supplies, I suggest having around 24 mil for this. Especially when you're first learning, you'll be burning through supplies very quickly, so a bit of a bank will help. For my setup, I'm bringing full subjugation, a polypore staff, as well as an abyssal wand. You will see why in a bit. I have an asylum surgeon's ring, an amulet of glory, and an illuminated godbook. If you don't have the godbook, I strongly suggest having a sign of life instead. In my inventory, I'm bringing a gothic staff, a shield, two restore flasks, my stat boosting potion, and the runes I need to cast my highest level spell. Beyond that, I have an inventory full of beltfish and green blubber jellyfish. It's worth noting that my beast burden is also summoned and full of the same food. If you want to be fancy here, you can bring vulnerability bombs or the runes to cast the vulnerability spell. However, it's not required and just a nice damage boost. I won't be using them, so don't feel pressured to bring them. Now let's move along to your revolution bar. On screen is a bar recommended by the PVM Encyclopedia. It does have some expensive or hard unlocks like Corruption Blast or Sunshine, which normally I would say you don't need these abilities. I will say that again, but at this level of PVM, if you want to continue on improving, these abilities are invaluable. If you don't have them unlocked yet, strongly consider doing so. You will not regret it. There are a couple of key abilities for this fight that we're going to go over now. Telos is unusual in the fact that he can be stunned. This means the more you can stun him the better because you will be taking less mechanics and therefore less damage. It's important to know which of the abilities on your bar are stuns so that you can use them manually when you want to stun Telos. For Mage, those abilities are Impact, Deep Impact, and Asphyxiate. In this fight, we will also be relying on our defensive abilities which we have been learning throughout this series, like Devotion, Debilitate, Anticipate, Freedom, and Resonance. We will also be adding a new one to the list called Reflect. If you're unfamiliar with this ability, it's a defensive that requires a shield to be equipped and reduces the damage you take by 50% while returning a small amount of damage to your attacker. This ability will be vital in the fourth phase of this fight, so have it on an easy to reach keybind if you can. 
If you're not comfortable with shield switching yet, I've left a link card in the top right which will take you to my Vindicta video where I go a lot more in depth about it. Telos will nearly require you to learn this technique if you want to increase the enrage, so it's very worthwhile to learn. Let's get into the mechanics. There's a lot to learn here, so get out your pencil and paper and let's get started. Telos has 4 phases below 100% enrage, and 5 phases after. This guide will focus mostly on phases 1 through 4, but I will touch on phase 5 very briefly at the end. A lot of these phases share mechanics, so starting with one phase at a time will build you a good base on which to learn and improve at this boss. In phase 1, Telos will attack with melee. There are three different mechanics that you will see in Telos' normal rotation, all separated by three auto attacks. In the order that you will see them, they are Tendrils, a Gilinor Uppercut, and Hold Still. Starting with Tendrils, Telos will reach down towards the ground, snaring you where you stand and dealing constant typeless damage. You break this mechanic by dealing an amount of damage that's determined by the enrage that you're at, but it will start at 3000. If you're using Mage, it's most advisable to save an ability like Wild Magic to break the Tendrils instantly. At lower enrages, you can really break it with whatever you'd like, but it will start to require a lot more thought and ability choice by the time you reach 100. Three auto attacks after you break the Tendrils, Telos will charge an uppercut. Telos will hold in place with his arm back, and then after a moment will charge to your current location, dealing high unblockable damage. You can avoid this damage by timing a surge or escape at the moment Telos charges. This timing is subject to change depending on the lag of the world you're in, so if you're trying to learn Telos, I'd suggest hopping to a world with less than 400 people in it. I'll show you the timings a few times here, so you can get a feel for it. Three attacks after that is the last ability in the rotation, named Hold Still. Telos will attempt to stun you, deal a high amount of melee damage, and then moments later leap to your position, crushing you, turning off your protection prayers, and dealing a high amount of unblockable damage. At lower end rages, you can get away with using freedom on the stun and then running away from your position, but if you want to be efficient with it and save yourself a lot of supplies, you can use Anticipation after Telos' second auto attack so that when he tries to stun you, it won't work, and at this point you can run to the side, equip your shield, and then as his hand hits the ground, use Resonance. This will heal you a huge amount and allow you to avoid the jump. This is probably the most crucial part of learning this fight, as if you can do this every time the mechanic comes around, you will save yourself tons of supplies and will be able to last much longer in the fight. In addition to these mechanics, there is also a green beam that will spawn across the arena. If Telos is allowed to stand in the beam, he will gain progress towards a large attack. If we stand in the beam, we will gain 10 adrenaline per tick. The obvious choice is that we don't allow Telos in the beam, and we stand in the beam. But if there's too much going on, the next best choice is just to get as far away from the beam as possible so that neither of you are in it. These three mechanics, as well as random beam spawns, will endlessly repeat until you bring Telos down to three-fourths of his total max HP. The higher in rage, the more HP Telos will have, but at zero he will always start at 400,000 HP. After that, Telos will shatter the platform you're standing on, sending you into phase two. Depending on which mechanic Telos did last in Phase 1, he will start with a different mechanic in Phase 2, but I will touch more about how to know it's coming after we cover all of the phases, so for now, we'll ignore it. Telos will continue to attack with melee, and will keep all three of the mechanics we had in Phase 1, those being the Tendrils, the Uppercut, and the Hold Still. For this phase, he will add one more, that being the Magic Onslaught. We will also be exchanging the Green Beam for a Black one. While Telos is standing in the beam, he will be charging the mechanic we just called the Magic Onslaught, and while you are standing in it, you will take and deal less damage. There is also a very basic new mechanic if you're above 50% in rage, called a Virus. This mechanic would happen just after the Hold Still attack in Phase 2, and simply requires you to go step in the black beam for a moment. If you don't step in the beam, you will take constant typeless damage until you do. The Magic Onslaught is a continual barrage of magic attacks, and its duration is determined by how much of the bar below Telos' HP has been filled up. Each attack of the Onslaught will cost Telos a bit of his bar, and the attack stops when the bar reaches zero. During this attack, you will be making sure that Telos is not in the beam. He cannot move during this attack, so if you need to stand in the beam to block it, that is totally acceptable. You should be praying Mage for these attacks and using Devotion to negate all of their damage to zero. If the Onslaught lasts longer than your Devotion, use abilities like Debilitate or Reflect to reduce the damage you take by half. 
The order of mechanics for phase 2 goes like this. Tendrils, Onslaught, Hold Still, Virus, Uppercut, and Repeat. Once you reduce Telos to 50% of his total HP, you'll be moved on to Phase 3. Phase 3 can be pretty difficult to learn, but will be one of the easiest phases once you get it down. Telos will attack with Mage in this phase, so make sure you switch your prayers to that. Phase 3 revolves around a Red Beam. While in this beam, you will take and deal increased damage, the exact opposite of the Black Beam we just saw. If Telos stands in this beam, you will see the bar below his HP start to rise. If it reaches too far to the right, Telos will spend some of that meter to do an unblockable, high damaging nuke. In lower enrages, you can tank a few of these, but once you start pushing higher, these will kill you instantly. We can counteract this progress by doing a couple of things. Keeping Telos out of the beam, dealing a lot of damage, and killing the three minions that will occasionally pop up during this phase. These minions will not attack you and have very low HP. Killing them will buy you more time to avoid getting nuked. If you see the bar getting too far to the right, or if you want to take this phase very carefully, I suggest you take these guys out every time they spawn. If you have good damage and are able to control Telos well, you may be okay to ignore them, but it's all up to you and what you feel comfortable with. Telos only has two mechanics in phase 3, or three if you're above 50% in rage. Those will be the uppercut, the hold still, and the virus if you're above 50%. We've seen all of these mechanics in previous phases, so you should know how to deal with them. Keep in mind, if you're in the red beam, you will take and deal more damage, so you can die very easily if you're not careful. On the flip side, if you are confident, you can maximize your damage potential and end this phase very quickly. If you have the Onslaught ability unlocked from the Mazcab ability codex, you can use that while in the red beam to clear this phase almost instantly. If you don't, strong threshold stuns and high damaging abilities while in the red beam will take care of Telos very quickly. If you're struggling in this phase and feel as though you're about to be nuked, you can use abilities like Debilitate or Reflect to reduce the damage Telos will deal to you by 50%. Once you have Telos down to 25% of his total HP, you'll be on to what will be the final phase if you're below 100% in rage. In this phase, there will be no more beams. Instead, there will be three fonts that you will need to charge with your own HP but we'll come back to the fonts in just a moment. In this phase, Telos will have three mechanics, two of which we have seen already. The two we already know are the uppercuts and the hold still. The new mechanic we will need to interact with is called an anima bomb. Telos will launch a homing sphere out at you, which will deal high typeless unblockable damage, and will also apply a bleed on you. You can stop the bleed by entering the area of any of the three fonts we had seen before. Our response to the bomb is to use Debilitate to reduce its damage by half, and try to take the bomb into one of the fonts so the bleed never hits us. The order of abilities in this phase is as follows. Uppercut, Anima Bomb, Hold Still, Repeat. You'll cycle through these mechanics until three different phase points where you will need to interact with the fonts, which are at 75%, 50%, and 25% of the phase 4 health. For example, as 0% in Rage, it will be 75,000, 50,000, and 25,000 HP respectively. Once that health threshold is reached, Telos will jump over to the font, spawning three Anima Golems, and start charging his so much power attack. The only Golem you will need to actively worry about is the Volcanic Golem, who can randomly stun you for 4 seconds. Our strategy for each of the fonts will go like this. Equip a shield as well as a wand, use Anticipate and Reflect, and step into the font. Use AoE abilities with your wand, such as Corruption Blast, Chains, or Dragon's Breath, and then charge an ability Detonate. And then charge the ability Detonate. While charging Detonate, switch back to your staff and release it. This should clear all of the golems, and you should have a fully charged font. This is what I would consider optimal. Another way to do this is just to put your shield on, use Reflect and Anticipate, and use basic abilities to clear the golems with your wand. It may be less effective, but if that's more comfortable to you at the start, you can do that too. The most difficult part of any Telos kill below 100% in Rage is the second font. No matter what you do, Telos will always have a So Much Power attack charged after the second font. The way that So Much Power works is that once Telos is able to use it, it will insert itself into the next mechanic slot, pushing the actual mechanic back one. For example, if on phase 4 Telos had just used his Anima Bomb, but has charged up a So Much Power, instead of using Hold Still after his 3 auto attacks, he will use a So Much Power, and the mechanic after that will be a Hold Still. 
It's also unfortunate for us that after the font is charged, it will reset our defensive cooldowns, meaning that we have to wait a few seconds before using abilities like Resonance or Barricade. For this reason, our strategy for the second font is always to face Telos right after he does a mechanic, trying not to let him use any auto attacks before he goes into the font. This way, there will be three auto attacks before the so much power attack, and we have time to get our defensives back. The font strategy is the same, with Reflect, Anticipate, and AoEs. Once the font is charged, stun Telos as much as you can. Use Asphyxiate, Deep Impact, Impact, everything you have. You want him to be stunned for as long as possible. Once the stuns wear off, you'll need to handle the so much power attack. If you're confident in your timing, you can use resonance and it will hit you for zero damage. But if you're being a bit more careful, you can choose to use barricade instead. This section right here is probably the most difficult to learn out of the whole fight. If you have a sign of life, it is invaluable at this point. That way, even if you make a mistake and take a so much power, you won't die and you'll be able to continue on with the fight, hopefully finishing off the kill. After the second font, you'll DPS down to the third threshold and handle the third font the exact same as the first. From there, it's a matter of reducing the boss's HP to zero, and you will have completed your first Telos kill ever. If you're above 100% in rage, however, you are not done yet. You'll be on to phase 5. This will be a very brief overview of phase 5, and I'm sure that there are better guides out there for this part, but I will give you the basics. Telos will have all three beams centered on him and will spawn a group of a single type of Animal Golem. The most difficult to deal with is Volcanics, and if that's the case, make sure you have Anticipate up. You want to immediately find the green beam and stand in it. Use Sunshine immediately and start unleashing stuns on Telos. There will be falling rocks from the ceiling, so if you notice you're going to be hit by one, try moving either forward or backward while staying in the beam to avoid it. Once your stuns are gone, use a defensive like Debilitate or Reflect, and then start charging a detonate on the minions. Once the detonate is charged, release it and Tsunami at the same time. This should clear all of the minions, but if it doesn't, use another basic AoE like Corruption Blast or Dragon's Breath to kill those remaining. After that, go back to stunning Telos as much as you can. Around this time, the beams will switch and you'll get a virus of a random color. You'll need to find the beam whose color matches it and get into it to clear the bleed. A lot of times people like to use Barricade here to stop from taking a lot of damage from the virus. After you clear it, head back to the green beam as soon as possible. The easiest option here is to use Onslaught and hope it brings Telos down, but really you can use any of your most damaging abilities to try and get the job done. If the bar below Telos' HP fills up, he will unleash an instant kill ability. If that's going to happen, use the ability Immortality which will restore you back to life if you die while it's active. The ability requires a shield, and it is active for 30 seconds, so you have some wiggle room here. After the insta-kill, the phase will start over from the beginning in terms of mechanics, so rinse and repeat. If you get a second insta-kill, you'll need to kill the minions over by one of the fonts, but it's more likely that you won't get to this point. The most important thing about the phase is not to panic. There's a lot going on here, but if you keep a clear game plan in your head, it's no harder than phase 4 was before it. Now let's talk about how to know what mechanic Telos will start any given phase with. This graphic on screen is what I use to learn Telos, and I have found it incredibly useful. I will have it linked down in the description if you want it for yourself. The way you read this is by color coding, and then from left to right. For example, if you moved on to phase 2 right after Telos used an uppercut, you'll see that it is labeled in red in phase 1, so you'd move on to the red square in phase 2, which would be a hold still. From there, you read to the right so you know that the next ability would either be the virus if you're above 50% or the uppercut if you're below. If you ended phase 1 right after a tendrils, then the first ability Telos will use on phase 2 would be an onslaught because it's the matching green square. If you have a second monitor or a phone that you can prop up and look at while you're going through a kill, having this guide up and be able to glance at it is so helpful. But with that, I guess it's time to look at a full kill. Starting from Wars Retreat, you'll need to make your way back to the God Wars Dungeon 2. You can do this however you'd like, but I like to teleport to Al-Karid, go to the Travel Merchant, and go to Narda. From here, I head down to the Heart, and then you head directly north into this door here, and you'll find Telos. You start the fight by jumping down and picking your Enrage, and for this fight, I picked 0% Enrage. This is what you will have to start with if you're going for your first kills, or if you're just learning to practice. I surge behind Telos for some high level PVM reasons that I'm not entirely sure of, I put on Protect from Melee, and I put on Augury. 
I activate my Sunshine, and I start to use my stuns right away. Unfortunately, they splash this time, so instead I'll just be building up Adrenaline and hoping to get my Threshold stuns next. I know the first abilities will be at Tendrils, so I'm going to try and keep my Wild Magic off of cooldown to break it immediately. Here it does exactly that, and I'm able to continue on with the phase. Next, I'll be counting auto attacks and getting ready for the uppercut. I wait for it, and I actually surge a bit too late here, and I get hit by the damage. I do surge into the beam, which is nice and grants me more adrenaline, so I'm able to use Omni Power to get some extra damage in here. I get ready for the hold still, I use Anticipate and walk backwards into the beam and receive my heal. From here, I'm just getting ready for the next tendrils and trying to keep my wild magic off of cooldown to clear them instantly. I do it again, but the second hit splashes so I have to use a few more basic abilities to break myself out. The green bean spawns on me once again, so I choose to use sunshine and try and get a bit more damage in before the next ability. It doesn't work out too well as my stun ends up splashing and I need to surge away from the next uppercut and out of my sunshine. I walk back in, and then I get ready to use my Anticipation so I don't get stunned by the hold still. Here I use Anticipate, and I start walking off to the left, and then I Resonance as soon as Telos' arm hits the ground. This makes sure that I don't Resonance too early, and will secure me the kill very comfortably. This green beam spawns in a bad location, so I drag Telos out of it and make sure we're both out of the beam. For the next Tendrils, I use Wild Magic and clear it instantly again, and now it's just Rinse and Repeat. The uppercut comes out, so I click away and surge, dodging the damage, and now it's just a matter of finishing the phase. Pretty easily here I finish the phase, and since we phased out an uppercut, I know that the next ability on phase 2, according to our sheet, will be a hold still. So I'm going to make sure as soon as we drop down here to have my anticipate up to be ready for it. Telos uses one auto attack, and then I have my Anticipation up so that I can block the stun and get the heal. I drag Telos out of the Black Beam, knowing that the next ability he will use is an Uppercut, so I get myself some space away from the beam. I use my stuns, and then once the Uppercut comes, I surge away to safety. Looking at the Phase 2 chart, the next ability will be Tendrils, so I drag Telos once again out of the Black Beam and get ready to use Wild Magic. As soon as the tendrils come, I use wild magic, break myself out instantly, and continue on with the phase. The next ability in his rotation will be the magic onslaught, so I get ready to switch my prey to mage and use devotion. Unfortunately, just as he starts the onslaught, the black beam spawns behind him, so I walk around and stand in it, breaking his contact with it. Here I use devotion to reduce all of the magic onslaught damage to 1, and I just do my basic damage here because my damage will be reduced and I don't want to waste my cooldowns. After this, I switch back to melee prayer and get out of the beam, and then I get ready for the hold still is coming next. Once again, I hold my resonance until Telos' arm hits the ground, and then I switch back to my weapon and continue dealing damage. From here, we've seen this part of the fight before, so I'm just going to speed it up a little bit as this phase does take the longest for me. I dodge another uppercut and continually drag Telos out of the black beam so he doesn't charge and so I don't have to deal reduced damage. The next tendrils I clear it easily and we continue on towards the next onslaught. I stand in the beam, switch to protect from mage, and use devotion to reduce all of the damage. This phase is Telos and we move on to phase 3 pretty easily. Here in phase 3, I stand down into this corner to drag Telos to a spot where the beam almost never spawns, and then once the red beam spawns I surge up to it, and then I jump into it and start damaging down Telos. I choose to use Asphyxiate first so he can't attack me, then into Deep Impact, and then into Impact. Since we phase in an Onslaught and we can't get a Virus, we know that the next ability will be a Charge, so I don't have to worry about using Anticipate or losing any DPS in the downtime. Here comes the charge, and I surge into the red beam so I maintain my position in it and continue getting my boosted damage. I'm 
counting auto attacks here to make sure I know when the hold steal is coming so I can have my anticipation up. Again, I resonance this as a hand hits the ground and I get the full heal. As I'm walking back down into the beam, I choose to take out one of the side golems just for some safety and I continue my focus onto Telos. I continue using stuns and high damaging threshold abilities, and then as I move up to this last red beam I clear one more golem. I definitely didn't have to, but it felt safer to me and I figured I should go for it. I step back into the red beam, and I finish out this phase very nicely. And just like that, we're moving on to phase 4. My first ability in this phase will be an Anima Bomb. So I know that I don't need to be ready with an Anticipate or a Surge. So I stun, I do my damage, and then once an Anima Bomb comes, I get ready to use Debilitate and run to the font. Here I use Debilitate, and I run towards the font to cleanse the bleed. I choose to walk back out of the font, because if Telos is too close to it once you get him to his face point, he can stand on top of the minions and it's hard for you to see them. Here, I actually get hit by a full hold still. You can see it does a lot of damage and it turns off my protection prayers for a little bit. This only is comfortable at this low of an enrage. If you were at any higher enrage, it's very likely that you would have been signed or dead here. I put on my shield and wand and I step into the font, using Anticipate and Reflect and then charging a detonate. I put on my staff to activate the detonate, and then I continue to clear the remaining mobs. Telos' attack is blocked by the font, and then I get ready to surge away from this uppercut. I do that successfully, and I turn around and start DPSing Telos again. I know that the next ability will be an Anima Bomb, so I do some stuns and I get ready to use my Debilitate once it comes. I use Debilitate here, and run towards the next font I will need to charge, so I'm in a better location for when it happens. I want to be careful when I phase Telos here, because I don't want him to phase with too few auto attacks so that I don't get my defensives back before the next attack. After this I use Wild Magic in hopes to phase him, but both of them splash so he gets a free auto attack on me, which means I will lose time at the end of this font to protect myself. I do the standard font mechanics of Anticipate, Reflect into AoEs, and I clear all of these mobs very easily. Coming out of the font, I immediately use my stuns on Telos. I use Asphyxiate right away, and I get unlucky and my deep impact splashes. But I did buy myself enough time for my defensive to come off a of cooldown, so I can use Resonance to block the so much power and take zero damage from it. From here, it's just a matter of getting Telos down to his third threshold point and handling the third font. There's almost no way you can lose here as long as you pay it, play it very safe and handle your supplies well. I use Debilitate for the next Anima Bomb, and I move over to the font. I am not very careful here, and I do almost die, so make sure you take your time here and be ready with high health. I clear all of the minions, but not very effectively. You can see I'm a bit panicked towards the end here, and I don't clear them all and get stunned by the Volcanic Golem. Here Telos is going to hit me once again with a stun on the hold still. I should have been ready for it, but I wasn't. Here I use freedom to break the stun and just spam click away while eating my food. I do not want to die at this point, so I'm just playing it safe. I finish off the last golem which I would missed before, and I turn my attention back to Telos. I surge from the uppercuts, and I use the last of my thresholds to try and DPS him down. Telos was about to use his last mechanic here, that being the Anima Bomb, so I used Debilitate to reduce its damage, and then I finish out the fight nice and easily. I've pieced on a phase 5 from one of my 100% enraged kills, but if that was your first try, you will have beaten Telos for your first time. Here in phase 5, I turn on Protect from Mage, and I surge around to the back to get into the green beam. These green beams will these beams will spawn randomly every time, so the green beam may not necessarily always be in the back. I fat finger my keybinds for a little bit here before eventually getting my sunshine out and dodging this rock. Once I walk back into it, I take out the minions by charging a detonate and then releasing it with Tsunami. This clears all of them, and I turn my attention back to Telos using my stuns to, using my stuns to halt his progress. 
I dodge the next rock by walking closer to him, and I continue DPSing and using my strongest abilities when I can. The beams switch, and I get lucky that the green beam is on me, and also my virus so it clears instantly. I use Onslaught and activate my enhanced Excalibur, and from here I'm just riding it out. I should have dodged this last rock, on high iron rages it would have killed me, but for this it managed just fine and I was able to take out Telos very easily on the fifth phase. And that is Telos done! I hope you found this guide helpful, and if you did, please consider leaving it a like. If you like more than one of my videos, please consider subscribing. I've recently started streaming, so if you want to do some live PVM, make sure to follow my links in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and good luck. I will see you in the next one. Zingy out.